Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to our Romans teaching. Uh, this is chapter uh, 4 we're in today, part 5. And uh, I tell you, these have been some great uh, uh, sessions for me, probably more than anybody. But I thank the Lord we have the technology to be able to put them out there for whoever, wherever uh, they are. Could hear on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Curtis Hutchinson 316. They're even now being uploaded to our website, thecrosswaychurch.com. And I just encourage you to avail yourself to that. These half-hour teaching sessions on the book of of Romans could be used for just your own personal study or classroom because they're only half hour long and you just follow along verse by verse and, and, and you know there's nothing like a study in the Word of God as long as it's in its foundational context of righteousness. God says every word He's ever spoken, Proverbs 8 and 8, is in righteousness. God's words are words of righteousness and righteousness only flows into our lives by grace and grace only comes into our lives through faith in the sacrificial work of Christ, period, exclusively, no other avenue. So grab your paper, your pencil, and your Bibles and let's dig in. Last week we left off in verse, I think, 11 and 12, but I want to I back up and 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 start in verse 9 so we can flow right into where we are going to be today. And again, just uh, all these sessions are uploaded on my YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. Again, this is part 5 of Romans 4. There are like 23 sessions to chapter 1, 11 sessions to chapter 2, maybe 16 or so to chapter 3. And here we are today in part 5 of Romans 4. Let's back up and start in verse 9 today so we can roll into where we're going. And this is really a, a question being asked by Paul not to find an answer, but yet to give the answer. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? He's talking about Jews and the rest of the world. The Jews were, had the sign of circumcision and the rest of the world didn't because the rest of the world was, was not a people of God. He says, For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Highlight that in your Bible. Make sure you always know that, believe that exclusively. This is showing us the avenue by which righteousness is given to men, and that's faith. And if you back up in this same chapter, you'll see it's faith in the God that justifies the ungodly. That points to the sacrificial work of Christ. Verse 10, how was it then reckoned? How did God reckon righteousness to Abraham for faith? Was it when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? When did he get considered by God righteous? Watch, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. How many of you know Abraham was a Gentile before God made him a people of God? God picked Abraham, chose Abraham, set him apart, began to function in his life, use him, and, and Abram became a believer and, and, and ended up being called the father of faith. We'll see that today. Watch this. Verse 11, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal sign of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe. Abraham is the father of faith, the father of all those that believe. Though they be not circumcised, so that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And Paul, as we brought it out in last, the last session, Galatians 5, 6, says circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't avail you anything. Just like no deeds of anything we do avail us anything but faith that works by love. That's Galatians 5, 6. Take a note, write it down. And I'm going to give you some more things to write down a little later on. He says, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. So see, he received the gift of righteousness, the imputation of righteousness by faith before he was ever circumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, not do a work, 
not have an outward show. He's the father of those who have the faith. And yes, there will be outward works just like the New Testament saints. There is a flow of works. There, 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 the works that are in Christ, Ephesians 2.10, that we walk in. They're ordained that we walk in unto good works. It's there in the Bible. But we don't do those things to be saved. Amen. Just because there's works in a person's life doesn't mean they're saved. But if there is true faith, it will always result in works. Not to be saved, but just obedience to God. You know, I would get into that. I love getting into the obedience thing. I'll just say this. Obedience is, is what you believe. Read Romans 6, 17. We became obedient in God's eyes when we, when we obeyed, when we believed the message of the cross that freed us from sin. The gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ, who He is and what He did at the sacrifice. We were freed from sin and we became made. We were made servants of righteousness. Think about that. So you can't do obedience until you are obedient. Just because I want to go and find something in the Bible. Well, I did this. The Bible says this. I did that. The Bible says don't do that. I didn't do that. I've been obedient. If your faith is in the sacrifice of Christ, you have the standing as you have become obedient because your faith is in the cross of Christ. That makes you obedient alone. And you must be obedient before you can do obedient. I'm going to throw that in. Great stuff. Most church don't have a clue about that. He says, watch this, that the righteousness might be imputed unto them also, talking about the un uncircumcised. Now, watch this, verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision, not just that they're circumcised, but notice he gets real specific here. But who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. You see, faith came about before circumcision. And faith is what got Abraham the righteousness of God. And you have to, you have to be righteous to go to heaven. Nobody unrighteous is going to heaven. But you say, well, we're all unrighteous. All our righteousness is filthy rags. That's right. But when you place your faith in Christ and what He did at Calvary, He gives you His righteousness when He takes your sins away from you. Hallelujah. See, that's the best news you can ever hear. That's the best news you can ever hear. And when you keep your faith in the sacrifice of Christ, remember what we say, and it's so true, Everything that Christ manifests through His sacrificial work on the cross, which was love, mercy, grace, forgiveness, uh, obedience, love, everything was manifest there. And when that's where our faith is, if that's how our faith is in Christ through what He did as the Lamb of God, then the Holy Spirit saves us, puts us into Christ, begins to work inwardly to the point where it works out by that faith alone. And, and everything the cross manifests becomes a reality as to who we are now and the way we live. If my faith is in the cross... That was the manifestation of God's love, 1 John 4, 9 and 10. Now that love shed abroad in my heart, Romans 5 and 5, and it's shed abroad not only in my heart, but it's out to others. Faith works by love. If my faith is in Christ and what He did because He loved me, giving His life, that's what my faith is in. I'm going to love you in spite of you. See, faith in the cross removes us now from loving people if... Did you get that? Faith, true faith is faith in the sacrifice of Christ, the place where God manifests His love to us, shed it abroad in our hearts through our faith for us, in us. And if I keep my faith there, I can love you in spite of you. True faith is faith in the cross and it eliminates for us from I'll love you if... Jesus loved us, period, to the point of being obedient unto the death 
of the cross. Think about that. If my faith is in the cross, it eliminates me, moves me away from the world's love that says, I'll love you if you love me. I'll love you if you do this. I'll love you if. The cross is I love you, period. That's it. Don't care who you are, color you are, the amount of money you've got or don't have. It's I, The cross is I love you. Amen. And if that's where my faith is, guess what? I am loving you. I'll struggle sometimes because you do things that really just try me. But faith cannot fail because it works by love, that manifested love of God through Christ and His sacrificial work. That's where Christ was obedient unto death. And you say, well, He was obedient all His life. But all of that meant nothing to you until He was obedient unto death. You weren't grafted into, you weren't immersed into Christ until He obediently died for you. You weren't immersed into Christ when He was working miracles and when He was obedient in all other ways. You were immersed into Him by your faith in His death. Romans 6 and 3. We've been baptized into His death. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. That we were placed in Christ as He hang on the cross. That's right. You were there 2,000 years ago. God saw you from before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. The faith you would exhibit in His Son and what His Son would do for you. And when God saw that, He called you obedient. Think about that. That's good news. So what we're seeing here in the Scripture is that the promise was to Abraham by faith and not by any work. And it's the same today. People who teach that you have to be water baptized, you have to do the deed of water baptism before you can go to heaven, then they're eliminated from the grace that flows freely from true faith. See, that's not faith. That's works. And th those are two different things. Faith in Christ and His work or my faith is in me and my work. And it's not Christ and His work and my work. My work is excluded because my works bring about a boasting. This is why Paul said, I only boast in the cross. God forbid that I boast in anything other than the cross. God forbid that I be knowing anything else. I'm determined to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified. Why? Because that is the work of God. My faith in that brings those works in me, through me. Jesus said in John 16, I've got much more to say to you but you can't handle it now. You can't carry it. You can't bear it. Bear it. But I'm going to send the Spirit of Truth. And do you understand? When Jesus sent the Spirit of Truth, Jesus can continue working in us, working in us that work He finished at Calvary. And we can work it out by faith in that it's a done deal. Praise be to God. But it's not by works that we receive from God. It's by faith that we receive everything by God. Anybody that's teaching you have to do a deed to be saved or do a deed to please God or do a deed, listen, if that's what their faith is in, they've missed it. I heard a preacher some six, seven years ago right here in Atlanta say the reason that some of you are in bondage is because you're not taking care of the poor. And the Bible tells us to take care of the poor. And, and if you're not doing it, that's a sin. You're avoiding that. And you have bondage, sin in your life. It's bondage in your life. So you need to go feed the poor. Do you know how deceptive that is? Yes, there will always be the poor among us, Jesus said. And we're to help take care of the poor. You understand that according to the Bible. But if you place your faith in going out and taking care of the poor and expecting God to deliver you from the bondages you're in because now you're doing a deed of taking care of the poor, you, you've bypassed the object of faith. The object of faith is not you working to take care of the poor. Now God's going to deliver you. No, the object of faith is the cross. If that's where your faith is, then you will be led by the Spirit and deal with the poor that are around you. Do you understand that? But when you make the object of your faith for deliverance, salvation, the provision of God going and doing a deed... And preachers are telling, and they don't mean to be killing their congregations, but, but, but that doesn't remove the fact that they are. They don't mean to be killing their congregations. 
They don't mean to be putting poison on the table, but that don't mean that they're not. They are killing the congregations. When you don't point to Calvary, when you don't trust as a preacher in the cross exclusively to preach the Word of God in its righteous foundational context, which is the Lamb slain, glory to God, then, then we think we have to throw other things to put the people to work. If the message of the cross can't drive one to have faith in that alone, then they won't ever be found working the works of God that are in Christ Jesus. But that ain't up to me to control. Now that's where we preachers get in trouble. Listen, if we're not careful, we'll go begin to think the cross is not enough so I have to be in control of something. The message of the cross relinquishes our control not only as pastors but as people. <coughs> You're not really in control of anything except what you put your faith in. You put your faith in the cross of Christ, Christ and what He did there at Calvary, you relinquish your rights now to the Holy Spirit to lead you because of that truth, that, that faith. What happened there? If you don't place your faith in the sacrifice, then your faith is in your flesh, your works, and, and you're going to be in big trouble, not only you but your entire congregation and your family. So watch this, verse 13, because the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So today's big thing, and there's churches in every town in America, some of the biggest money pours into these denominations that preach law. You've got to be water baptized to go to heaven. You got to do this. If you, you have to do this, you have to do. Those are deeds. That's law. Instead of just believing, Christ did it all. He paid it all. He said it's finished, and now all that's required is your faith in what He finished. And 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 I have some scriptures I want to share with you today. I want to run through these real quick uh, because they're very important. They, these scriptures I'm about to share with you. Take notes. Write them down. Highlight them in your Bibles. Because these scriptures show that water baptism and everything else comes after faith in Christ. Not before. Any, anything we think we have to do to have true faith is not true faith. Because it can't be deeds and faith. It, it can't, you can't, you're, not, you're not given an opportunity to be saved, to come into the kingdom by works and faith, just faith. And I know there's other portions of scriptures, things that James wrote that people don't understand uh, that, that because they're not seeing the word in its righteous foundational context of Christ and Him crucified. Watch this. Genesis 17, 11, And you shall <coughs> circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign, a token of the covenant between you and me. A sign of what we've already got. I've already given you my righteousness, already imputed it unto you, Abraham. And for a sign of that, an outward show of that, circumcision. Watch this, Acts 8, 36 and 37. And this is when Philip was ministering the word to the eunuch and he believed and was saved. Acts 8 and 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Now listen very carefully. And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, see what's first, believing with all your heart, not doing something and then believing, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay, then water baptism. Not water baptism to believe, not water baptism to do anything except a, follow, a following of obedience because believing on Christ, remember, Romans chapter 6, made you obedient. Now, the way we live is obedient to the Word of God. But obedience to the Word of God without faith in the cross is not obedience to the Word of God in the eyes of God. Amen. Praise God. Watch this now. Romans 3, no, let's back up, Acts 10, 44 through 48. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. They heard the word. It was the gospel of Christ. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished 
as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Gentiles, uncircumcised, not water baptized, just Gentiles, lost. They believed the Word of God. They believed the Gospel. And the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, for they heard them speak with tongues. Now wait a minute. They are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Watch. And for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Already saved, imputed righteousness. Hallelujah. Obedient to God in the kingdom full of the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. In verse 48, Acts 10, And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Think about We just saw it in the Scripture. First comes the obedience granted by God, the classification of obedience to us because we believe the Word, meaning the Gospel, that frees from sin, Romans 6, 17 and 18. Romans 3, 21, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Now look at this. Now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. If we've not recognized the righteousness of of the law, the righteousness of God manifest without the law, without our deeds involved, then we've not yet recognized the righteousness of God. And we've not had it imputed unto us. Anyone that teaches a deed for salvation, you have to do a deed, you have to do a work, whatever it is, even if it's something in the Bible we're told to do. All those things come after faith in Christ and His sacrificial work. And everybody teaching that you have to do a work, a deed, you have to perform some type of work, they have not yet recognized the righteousness of God without the law, without the deeds of your hands, without your works. And if it's not recognized without the law, it's not recognized by you and me. Praise God. Watch this one more. This is very important. This New Testament scripture can trace all the way back to Abraham in Genesis. Watch this. For, this is Romans 10 and 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It all begins with the heart because it's only with the heart man can believe. Man can't believe with deeds. Man, I, our deeds are not our believing. Our deeds can be, if it's Holy Spirit led, the result of true faith. But deeds do not mean our faith is real. Do you know how many people have been water baptized and never went to heaven? Because their faith was in their water baptism. They didn't even really understand what it represented. Water baptism, really listen to me now, water baptism represents is symbolic of something in the past if it's real, if it's biblical. It represents you accepting the death of Christ for your salvation, you being immersed into Him, you being baptized into, here we go, into His death and buried with Him. And when you come up out of the water, water baptism even includes someone else baptizing you. The work itself, a picture of it is a preacher or someone baptizing you, a picture of something that's already happened, someone else's hand raising you up out of the grave. You know, you've seen lots of water baptism. Someone lowers you into the tank and raises you up out of the tank. That's symbolic of you having the operation of God, the Spirit of God immersing you into Christ in His death, em baptizing you into His death, burying you with Christ, and the hand of God 
the Spirit of God raising you up from the dead in Christ, the resurrection to live with Him. Water baptism is a picture of something that's already happened. Circumcision was a sign hourly of something that had already happened. An inward, heart-believing faith in the promise that God would send the Redeemer. Abram believed that from the heart. Men only believe under righteousness in the heart. It all starts in the heart. It doesn't start with a work and then go into the heart. Not our works. It starts with the work of God in Christ at the cross, reconciling sinners to Himself. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Amen. Think about that. Write it down. Go look it up. It doesn't start with our works. Our works, our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. On our best day, doing the best we can, our works are filthy. But Jesus' work is perfect. A man without sin, without flaw, fully obedient even unto the obedient act by which he was sent with a command to lay his life down and die on the cross for us. God honored that as the obedience of all all men and that obedience alone. I hope you got that. That obedience is the obedience God honors alone and that obedience is, is given to you upon your faith in that manifestation of obedience on the cross. Here we are back to that's why the object of faith has to be the cross because there Christ manifests all that God was looking for, all that God wanted to impart to man. Righteousness is declared from the cross. Romans 3.25 and 26. It was the cross that declared what God has made you through your faith in that. We were healed by His suffering, His stripes. Praise God. Everything is manifest at the cross. We don't live by faith in anything other than the Lamb and what He did at Calvary. Praise God. That's good news. It's not what we do. It's what He did. And when our faith is in Him, Christ, and what He did, then the Holy Spirit is able to move into us showing us, teaching us that which belongs to Christ, imparting that to us, and the very works of Christ are found working in our life by His Spirit. Remember again John 16, Jesus taught, I've got a lot more to say to you. Right now you can't bear it, but I'm going to send the Spirit of truth. He's going to communicate what I'm telling Him. He's going to finish this. He's going to begin to, to teach you what more I've got to tell you. Did you get that? Because Jesus wasn't through teaching. He went to the cross and finished everything it would ever take for all men to be saved, to know how to live saved, to live in victory, to not have to try to make it into heaven, which they can't work their self into heaven through righteousness, the righteousness of the law, our own righteousness, but that which is without the law, the righteousness of God that's of faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's good news, my friend. And, but most preachers, almost all preachers today, even those that know you get saved, saved, born again through faith in Christ and what He did at Calvary are teaching law as to how to live for God. Like the preacher I shared with you that said, if you're not taking care of the poor, that's why the bondages are in your life. So go take care of the poor and you'll see the bondages move away. That's preaching law. The object, people go out and say, well, i got to start taking care of the poor. They take care of the poor. And the Bible says that law is... If we are under, if we go back under law, that it stirs up our sin nature. And I want to read something to you. Uh, I, I'm out of time. I cannot believe I'm out of time. But I want to read this to you. This is out of the Pillar New Testament commentary. Uh, our, the true function of the law, it brings wrath. And I really don't have time to get into this. I'll make a note here. I keep these sessions at a half hour. We'll start right here. Uh, this next Monday morning. So, uh, man, I just I, I just get so excited. I can't believe a half hour really goes fast when you're in the Word of God. It may go slow when you're at work, but, well, we're not at work on our job. We're at work in the Word of God trying to hear from the Lord today. And I pray you've done just that. I love you. God bless you. And until next session, and you can find all these sessions at Curtis Hutchinson 316 on YouTube. 
Stay determined to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified. God bless you.